been on the board for three years as a trustee. She has been a student of the Morris Pratt Institute. Jane is currently the executive director of the Historical Society and Museum of Dunkirk. She is a bagpiper with the 96th Highlanders of Jamestown. Jane has written several magazine articles and books on history and pet therapy. She also evaluate, evaluates therapy dogs for Therapy Dog International. To raise the vibrations for Jane this morning, if you would uh, turn in your songbook to page six, and those of you who are able, please stand to, and sing Amazing Grace. great-great-grandfather 
an artist, and a spiritualist. Not only did I gain knowledge about spiritualism, but I gained knowledge about my own soul. I had found the religion that I had been searching for all of my life, right here in the nine principles of modern spiritualism. People are attracted to Lilydale because they are seeking something. Maybe it's a message from a loved one, a healing, just interest in the religion, learning about meditation, or just looking for a day of peace, communing with nature. I believe that whatever it is we seek, all of humanity wants an answer to the question, what happens when we die? Is there heaven and hell? Do we really live after we die? Or do we simply go to sleep, never to wake again and cease to exist? Where do we go if there is a life after death? There are answers to these questions if we choose to believe. I'm going to share with you some accounts of what happens when we die. The accounts that I will be sharing with you come from spirit working through a medium or from someone who had a near-death experience. The first account I will share is from a small book written in 1884, Telephonic Messages from the Spirit World, published by the Reverend Mrs. T.B. Stryker, a spiritualist medium. Reverend Mrs. Stryker communicates with the band of nine in the spirit world. The newest member of the band is referred to as Morning Star. Morning Star communicates to his father through the medium. Morning Star passed into the spirit world on Sunday, December 9, 1883, at the age of 28. These are Morning Star's words. I realized full well when the vital cord was severed, which bound spirit and body, at that instant, I realized that I was indeed surrounded and in the midst of a host of loving relations and friends. I found myself as tangible a being as I had ever been. The first one I recognized was a very dear aunt who I love very dearly in earth life. Morning Star describes his home, which was similar to the desires he had for a home on the earth plane. They who accompanied my spirit to its destination informed me that this home was a result of my earth life. The defects were the results or corresponded with the defects in my life. Opportunities neglected, wrongs committed, and good omitted. The architectural decorations and all the beautiful adornments were the result of the good, kindness, and love of earth life. I found that the defects might be remedied by acts of love and kindness in the near future. And I may say that I am striving as best I can to make my home a perfect one. In the world of spirit, all things are recognized by the spirit. We are taught that he who spends a life devoted to selfish purposes that has allowed the material to control the spiritual 
are very often those who occupy the hut in spirit life. For these we have, as well as the mansions and palaces. The pleasures, entertainments, and those things which tend to divert and inspire the mind in earth life, all these things we find only more intensified in spirit life. The decorations and adornments, beautiful draperies and music, art in every department we have, if our acts are worthy the aspirations. Beautiful hills and valleys, lakes and rivers, foliage and trees whose foliage never withers. We have rocks and dells. We have great expanse of seas, all things that inspire the heart for a man, for the beautiful, all these things we have in this realm of the soul. A great love for pets marked my earth life, and heaven in its grandeur and beauty could not have been heaven to me had I been debarred the pleasure of bestowing my affection upon the animal kingdom. But what may seem strange, yet to me delightful, and goes to make my spirit home to me more beautiful, is the fact that those things I loved in earth life have been accorded me in my spirit home. Through the Mists by Robert J. Lees was written in 1898. Robert J. Lees is asked to write this book by a spirit named Frederick Winterly. Frederick, or Fred as he is known, enters Lee's room every morning and dictates the book to him. Fred had attempted to save a boy running across a London street crowded with horses and carriages. Fred grabbed the boy and found himself and the boy suddenly laying on a grassy slope. Something touched me. I clasped the boy more firmly and stepped forward. The noise ceased. Vehicles and street faded away as if some great magician had waved his wand. The darkness disappeared and I was lying upon a grassy slope in an enchanted land. Fred goes on to explain that he could see a fog beyond possibly the edge of it two miles away. He realized this was from where he entered this vast plain. After resting for quite some time, an acquaintance of his, Helen, greets him. Helen explains to Fred that his passing was so quick that he did not spend much time in the mist. Helen asked Fred if he had gone to the top of the slope yet. He had not, so Helen walked with Fred to the top. I stood entranced by the scene which lay before me. From the foot of a gentle slope, clothed in grass of the richest, softest green I had ever beheld, a landscape stretched away on every side, dressed in more shades of color than I had power to estimate. Pulsations of visible vitality throbbed and trembled in stone and tree and flower, each of which poured forth its rhythmic quota to the harmonic proclamation which sounded from every side that death is swallowed up in victory. The next account is from a book titled Private Doubting, received by Wellesley Tudor Pole in 1917. Private Doubting was hit by a shell in the trenches of France in August 1916. He tells W.T. Pole that he felt no pain and followed fellow soldiers as they carried his body to a field hospital. He soon realized his body was dead as it was taken to the morgue. Private Doubting sat with his body and fell asleep, only to find when he awoke, his body was gone. 
he soon found himself floating above the battlefield and then above the clouds. He was finally met by his brother William and was taken to what was referred to as a rest hall where newly arrived pilgrims go when they are confused. In Private Dowding's words, never shall I forget my happiness. I sat in the alcove of a splendid domed hall. The splashing of a fountain reached my tired being and soothed me. The fountain played music, color, harmony, bliss. All discordances vanished, and I was at peace. On earth, the study of crystal formations was a great hobby of mine. To my intense delight, I discovered the splendid hall was constructed according to the law of crystal formations. After a visit from a messenger from another sphere, private doubting was taken to the Hall of Silence. In the Hall of Rest came peace. In the Hall of Silence came understanding. He was then taken for a visit to the Mount of Vision where the reservoirs of illuminations nearly blind him. After returning back to the Hall of Silence for reflection, Private Doubting was finally taken to a hall of instruction. Private Doubting recalls that the hall was crowded. Those that were there wished to learn how to return to the realm of mist between the worlds, to help new arrivals, and to prepare the way for communion between souls already here and their friends on earth. The same messenger then led private doubting to the center of the hall. There the teacher stood with pupils sitting around him. The teacher was dressed in a shining robe of flaming blue. When he spoke, orange and violet rays of light spread from him throughout the hall. Private doubting relays this message to W.T. Paul. My life is now divided into three parts. One spent in the Hall of Instruction, another in the land of the mist, helping to dispel the fog and tumult, and the third in the gardens of rest, where I have a little house and garden of my own. We construct our own surroundings here by the creative power of our own thoughts. Private Downing also had his Manchester Terrier, his pet while on the earth plane, as a companion. The Blue Island was published in 1922. A book communicated by W.T. Stead, recorded by Pardo Woodman and Estelle Stead. W.T. Stead died in 1912 with the sinking of the Titanic. Estelle was the daughter of W.T. Stead and had communications with her father shortly after he passed. Pardo Woodman was an acquaintance of Estelle's and had only met her father briefly once before his passing. Mr. Woodman began to develop his automatic writing skills and in the presence of Estelle Stead, would communicate with W.T. Stead. It was in 1921 that Estelle and Mr. Woodman received the message that Estelle's father wanted them to sit for a series of messages, which he said would tell of his arrival and some of his experiences on the other side. W.T. Stead first realized that he had died when he found a number of friends with him who had passed over years before. He had the desire to use the telephone to give the paper some headlines for that evening. This was still 
This was still near the earth where he could see everything going on there. The wrecked ship, the people, the whole scene. In Stead's own words, a matter of a few minutes and time only, and here were hundreds of bodies floating in the water, dead. Hundreds of souls carried through the air, alive, very much alive. The scene on the boat at the time of striking was not pleasant, but it was as nothing to the scene among the poor souls nearly thrust out of their bodies, all unwillingly. It was both heartbreaking and repellent. And thus we waited, waited until all were collected, until all was ready, and then we moved our scene to a different land. We saw this land far off when we were approaching, and those of us who could understand realized that we were being taken to the place destined for all those people who pass over suddenly. We arrived feeling, in a sense, proud of ourselves. It was all lightness, brightness. Everything as physical and quite material in every way as the world we had just finished with. Our arrival was greeted by welcomes from many old friends and relations who had been dear to each one of us in our earth life. Stead is met by a friend and his father. He noted that he and his father and friend were clothed in exactly what they wore on earth. Everyone appeared to be quite normal as on earth. He was struck by the coloring of the place, a light shade of a deep blue. He did not mean that the people, houses, trees, and animals were blue but the general impression was that of a blue land. His father explained that it was a great predominance of blue rays in the light, and that was why it was so wonderful a place for mental recovery. Stead takes a long walk with his companions on the seashore. There were some very big buildings on our right, and on our left was the sea. All was light and bright, and again, this blue atmosphere was very marked. We arrived at length at a huge building, circular and with a great dome, supported by vast columns. The interior was an amazingly lovely blue. My father explained to me that the place we were in was a temporary rest house, one of many, but the one most used by newly arrived spirit people. There were other buildings used for the same purpose, as well as for other purposes. By that I mean there is more than one of each. The chief work on this island is to get rid of unhappiness at parting from earth ties, and therefore, for the time being, the individual is allowed to indulge in most of Earth's pleasures. There are houses given over to book study, music, art, athleticism of all kinds. Every kind of physical game can be practiced. You can ride horseback, you can swim in the sea. Stead goes on to say, my life here has been a very normal, healthy, and interesting affair, just as my life on earth was. I have been invested with no powers generally attributed to spirits and fairies. I am still just an ordinary man with an ordinary, plain, blunt outlook on life. The change has in no way altered me. In 1975, Dr. Raymond Moody wrote about experiences his patients had in the book, Life After Life. These were near-death experiences, otherwise known as NDEs. Common experiences of the NDE patients were watching their body from above 
as doctors and nurses attended to it. Going through a tunnel and meeting friends and relatives who had crossed over years before and experiencing a sense of total peace. In Daniel Brinkley's book, At Peace in the Light, he talks about the after effects of a near-death experience he had in 1975 when struck by lightning. Daniel wrote about the spiritual experience he had in his first book, Saved by the Light. It was September 17, 1975, the day on which my life was forever changed. I was 25 years old, in the best physical shape of my life. It was seven at night, and in the next moment, I would be dead. Jolts of electricity coursed through my body, and every cell of my being felt as if it had been bathed in battery acid. While the doctors and nurses tried to jumpstart my heart, I went up a tunnel that spiraled around me and vibrated with the sound of heavenly chimes. The tunnel that engulfed me was dark, but ahead was a light that became brighter and brighter as I moved toward it. Soon, I was in a paradise of brilliant light, a soothing illumination that bathed me in love and comfort that made me feel as though I were as weightless as helium and as loved as a newborn child. As this happened, a shimmering silver form appeared. It came like a silhouette through the fog. As it approached, I felt a deep sense of love that became so intense that it was almost too pleasurable to a stand. Danian Brinkley was clinically dead for 28 minutes after being struck by lightning. After this NDE, he was left with an extraordinary sense of perception. He used his newly found psychic ability to help people face the transition of death. He came to understand that his mission was to offer great comfort to the dying. My last account is from Family Reunion by Joseph Babinski, who happens to be my uncle. It was written in 2015. Joseph wrote the messages in the book through automatic writing. In a message from his mother, Julia, my grandmother, she talks about her daughter, Anna, who only lived one day. Our daughter was raised by loving and beautiful spirits. This is common in cases where children pass as infants. These loving spirits cared for her as though she was their own child. Anna and I often visited, though I was not aware and did not remember our visits. During a person's sleep time, there is a continuing connection with individuals, in many cases with loved ones that are presumed to be dead. I visited often with Anna, but as I said, did not recall these visits while I was alive in my physical body. When I passed, I awoke in my new life and was greeted by family. Anna was present and we immediately embraced, for then I remembered. Anna became my guide and teacher. Anna is a very bright spirit, and her home is very high in the celestial heaven. If I may say, she is somewhat like an overseer for our family. She helps each one to accept and adjust to their new life here. My Uncle Joe passed into spirit this past June. It is my hope that I will connect with him and learn about his experience on the other side. Spiritualism gives us knowledge about life beyond, if you choose to believe. 
We learn not to fear death because as our fourth principle states, we affirm that the existence and personal identity of the individual continue after the change called death. If you go to a medium for a reading, ask for your friends and relatives and spirit to tell you what it is like where they are. If you happen to talk to spirit yourself, don't forget to ask them to describe life in spirit. You will find that the more you know about life on the other side, the more peace it will bring into your life. I hope you will all find what you seek. Thank you.